Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah! Let's talk about Lewis dot structures, also called electron dot diagrams. Lewis dot structures show the arrangement of valence electrons around an atom or a molecule. Let's first talk about fluorine. We know that fluorine has seven valence electrons. We know that there are four hybrid orbitals around the fluorine, and if you don't know what a hybrid orbital is yet, don't worry about it. And we know that electrons like to be paired up, so we're going to arrange the seven electrons around the fluorine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So fluorine has seven valence electrons, and that's how they would arrange themselves around a fluorine atom. Let's talk about oxygen. Oxygen has six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six electrons arranged around an oxygen atom would have two paired electrons and two unpaired electrons. Let's look at nitrogen. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. And we're looking at just the valence electrons. We don't care about what the core electrons are doing. We're only interested in the valence electrons. Let's arrange five valence electrons around the nitrogen. One, two, three, four, five. We see that nitrogen has one set of paired electrons and three unpaired electrons. The atom does not particularly care for having unpaired electrons. Electrons are much more stable when they're paired up. This is why these three elements tend to form diatomic atoms. You see, fluorine has one unpaired electron. If it happened to be near another fluorine atom, which is pretty much always the case when you've got fluorine, you never have just one atom of fluorine, really, then you would be meeting another fluorine atom that had seven valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, if these two fluorine atoms got together, they could bring their two electrons closer and then they could share their unpaired electrons with each other and then both atoms would have completely paired up electrons around them. Look at oxygen. If oxygen were to come across another oxygen atom this oxygen atom would also have six valence electrons with two unpaired electrons. If these oxygen atoms decide to get close enough, they can cause their unpaired electrons to pair up, these guys getting together and these guys getting together. They can decide to share these unpaired electrons with each other. Now this is kind of a disaster. The way you would normally draw it is this way. You would normally put the two paired up electrons in between them like that. And actually you wouldn't draw it this way anyway. Not everybody's the same, but generally what you'll see is shared electrons being displayed as lines. So since there are four electrons, two pairs, being shared between those two oxygens, you have two pairs of electrons that must stay sharing in between those two atoms. If these electrons were to decide to go off on their own, you would no longer have a stable atom, so they're not going to. They're going to stay there sharing with each other. These two fluorine atoms they have an octet. They are stable because there are eight valence electrons around them. If these two atoms decide to go their own way, they will no longer have an octet. They will no longer have eight valence electrons. That makes them less stable, so they have no reason to separate. 
This causes these two fluorine atoms to be bonded together. We represent the bonded pair of electrons with a line. These two fluorine atoms are sharing a pair of electrons with each other, a covalent bond. Let's look at nitrogen. Two nitrogen atoms. This one also has five valence electrons. If they were to share a couple of electrons, they'd have to get close enough to do it. Unfortunately, this still doesn't create an octet for either of them. Now they've only got six valence electrons. Six is better than five, but six is not eight. So, they'd probably share another pair of electrons. Sharing these pair of electrons as well, Sharing these two electrons as well brings our total up to seven. Seven is better than five, but seven is not eight. They would probably decide to share these electrons as well. We share them by moving this unpaired electron into position between the two nuclei, and this unpaired electron into position between the two nuclei, and now both nitrogens feel like they have eight valence electrons around them. Normally this molecule would be drawn with three bonded pairs in between them and then a lone pair on each nitrogen. So we see that nitrogen would form a triple bond, oxygen would form a double bond, fluorine would form a single bond. So this is how Lewis dot structures can show the arrangement of valence electrons around atoms in a molecule and how we can derive useful information from those Lewis dot structures. For example, the bond holding the two fluorines together is a single bond. The bond holding the two nitrogens together is a triple bond. And you would expect that the triple bond would be harder to break than the single bond, and you would be correct. It is much, much harder to break the two nitrogens apart than it is to break the two fluorines apart. Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah! Yeah, 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 yeah.